Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Cassandra would like to introduce you to Dex Carr, who apparently also likes to be known as James Scott, and who changed his name again to James William once they got to hangouts. Hello Cassandra Higgins, he said. Hello Dex Carr, said Cassandra. I'm doing good, he said. How are you doing today and hope you're having a great day. So, how was the weather condition over there right now? Good morning, said Cassandra. It's damp and cloudy. I hope you shine as brightly and beautifully as the light of dawn, he replied. Good morning, friend. I'm from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Currency, working in Libya. Where are you from? I live in Bury St Edmunds. That's in England, she said. Why are you asking me what currency they use in Libya? I don't know. I've never been there. I'm a neurosurgeon doctor working in Libya, he said. OK, then you must know what currency they use, she replied. Can you tell me more about yourself, he said, having no idea what she was talking about. What do you want to know? I run the family estate. I was born here. I'm a single father, he said, but I have a daughter who's in boarding school in Italy with her class teacher, who's a friend of mine. Her name is Julia, 16 years old. OK, how old are you? replied Cassandra. How? 58 years old, he said. How old are you? 62, she replied. Wow! That's really good, he said. What's your job? I already told you, I run the family estate. We have 56 acres with a lot of woodland, a small herd of belted Galloway cattle, 26 sheep, an elderly Shetland pony, four dogs, three cats and a chicken. I'm sure you've noticed that what she has on the estate and its size changes every time. I have thought about doing bed and breakfast to bring in some money, but the house needs too much work and I'm not sure that our ancient heating system would cope. And anyway, Daddy left a family trust, which keeps me very comfortably. OK, he said, and then sent her his email address so that they could move to Hangouts. Over on Hangouts, it wasn't long before our single brain-celled scammer started struggling. And later in the video, Cassandra got very frustrated with him. Hi, he said on Hangouts. Found you, said Cassandra. OK, he said. How are you doing today? And hope you're having a great day. I'm there right now. Please text me right now. You were just talking to me on Facebook or have you forgotten, said Cassandra. Yes, yeah, it's me, he said. So, can we know more about us? So, can you tell me more about you? So, what are you doing right now? I'm standing upside down in a rain barrel, said Cassandra. What are you doing right now? I'm in my office right now, he said. Your office? asked Cassandra. That name you saw on Facebook, that is my name that my father gave to me. My real name is James Williams. I miss talking to you. Please can you respond to me so I will know you more better? What on earth are you rabbiting on about, said Cassandra. Miss talking to me? You are talking to me. I asked about your office. I'm in my office. Doesn't tell me anything, does it? Where is your office and what do you do? I'm a neurosurgeon doctor working in Libya, he said. That sounds frightfully specialised, said Cassandra. How long have you been there? I'm here in two months right now, he said. So what is your job right now? Can you tell me more about you? Tell me everything about your family and yourself. I run the family estate, she said. We have 56 acres of mixed woodland and agricultural land. I don't really have any family. I looked after Daddy until he died 10 years ago. There's just me and Chapman, the housekeeper here now. What made you decide to become a neurosurgeon? We never had any medics in our family. Daddy was a solicitor. OK, he said. Why did you decide to become a neurosurgeon? asked Cassandra. And that kind of was the beginning of his downfall, really. I'm the only son of my parents, he said. I lost my mum since 1982. Why my father died out of cancer, 1986. I was raised up by my uncle, who later died, 2005. He died of hard drugs. He was a drug addict. My father was a principal and my mother was a teacher and a choir as well. I lost everything I had at an early age. Your mother was a whole choir, said Cassandra. Isn't that a soloist? 
What kind of principles did your father hold? And for the third time, why did you decide to become a neurosurgeon? My father, treat me to a neurosurgeon doctor school before my father lead the way, he said. Meaning? asked Cassandra. Are you telling me your drug-addicted father, who didn't raise you himself, was a neurosurgeon? Please write in English. I am an honest and good Christian, he said, who loves being surrounded by family, friends and holidays. Yeah, I like being surrounded by holidays as well. I'm ready for a serious relationship and I really look forward to starting with the right person. I'm an honest, loyal, passionate, generous, giving, affectionate, sexual, supportive, sensitive and a good listener who's easy to get along with. I am outgoing and very spontaneous. Yes. Please answer the questions and stop writing random rubbish, said Cassandra. Are you telling me your drug-addicted father, who didn't raise you himself, was a neurosurgeon? And yes, you're right. I got confused. It was supposedly his uncle who was a drug addict, not his father. But he never actually seemed to point that out. I don't think he ever really realised. Your mother was a whole choir. Isn't that a soloist? And what kind of principles did your father hold? So you're telling me you became a neurosurgeon because your drug-addicted father, who you barely knew, told you to become one? What a load of nonsense. Your mother was a whole choir. Isn't that a soloist? What kind of principles did your father hold? And you'll notice that Cassandra repeats herself rather a lot throughout this video because that's kind of the only way to get this man to understand even a basic sentence. Really? My grandfather was a neurosurgeon doctor before I passed away, he said. My grandfather is already dead. Your mother was a whole choir, repeated Cassandra. Isn't that a soloist? And what kind of principles did your father hold? Please don't make me ask again. This is getting frightfully boring. Yes, my father was a principal before he died. Can you tell me more about your father? A principal what? replied Cassandra. I am mother, he said. No, you aren't, said Cassandra. What kind of principal was your father? Daddy was a solicitor. He worked for a large firm in London and specialised in company law. What kind of principal was your father? Good, replied our man. What kind of principal was your father? asked Cassandra for the umpteenth time. A principal what? trombonist, violinist, school headmaster. My father is a bank manager before next away. As well as being a neurosurgeon and a drug addict, asked Cassandra. Neurosurgeon doctor, he said. I'm a doctor right now in Libya. I treat injuries. I said people live. So can you tell me everything about your marriage? Your father wasn't a bank manager. Stop changing the subject. I'm not married. Was your father a neurosurgeon, a bank manager, or both? I have to go out now. While I'm out, you can also tell me about your mother's choir. I expect to come home and find you have answered. One, was your father a neurosurgeon and a bank manager? Two, was your mother a whole choir? My father is a bank manager, he said. So when you keep telling me he was a neurosurgeon, that isn't true. She said, copying and pasting the bit where she'd said, as well as being a neurosurgeon and a drug addict, and he'd replied, neurosurgeon doctor. My mother is home choir, he said. What is a home choir? asked Cassandra. You mean she sang in the shower? I told you that my great-grandfather is a neurosurgeon doctor. Yes, said Cassandra. And you told me twice that your father was a neurosurgeon. I answered your question, he said. So Cassandra copied and pasted a lot of what had already been said before, followed by, you've given me two different answers, that your father was a neurosurgeon, two, that he was a bank manager, so tell me, which one is true, please? Was he a bank manager or a neurosurgeon? You have a count of ten to tell me. She got to zero and said goodbye. OK, he said, my father is a, my grandfather is a bank manager. Who gave birth to my father? I'm so busy with work, he said. So can you tell me more about yourself? But I have always prayed to God for another God-fearing woman to love me and my beloved daughter Julia until the evil hands of death took her away from me. 
Since then, loneliness has been the order of my day. My father is A. What was your father? And what on earth does this mean? My mother is home choir. I will answer your questions if and only if you answer these questions that I have asked you over and over and over. It's getting tedious and boring. Any questions you do ask me, I will make you ask at least four times before I give you an answer. What question you want to ask me, he said. Please can you ask me, so I will ask you more better. Please learn to read, said Cassandra, copying and pasting the bit where she'd said, What was your father, and what on earth does my mother as a home choir mean? I don't understand you. You're insulting me, he said. You said, My father is a, my grandfather is. What was your father? I just answer all your questions, he said. No, you did not, said Cassandra. You said, my father is a, a what? And why on earth do I have to ask you so many times? What is wrong with you, he said. Nothing, said Cassandra. I'm just asking you a simple question. What was your father? Well, the question is, why are you unable to answer? So, for the very last time, my father... Is a bank manager, he said. OK, so he definitely wasn't a neurosurgeon. Good. Now, tell me what this means. My mother is home choir. My grandfather, who gave birth to my father, is a neurosurgeon doctor, he said. You told me he was also a bank manager, she said, copying, pasting the bit where he said, My father is a, my grandfather is a bank manager. My father is a bank manager, he said, before it died. My grandfather is a neurosurgeon doctor. That is what I told you. So when you said, my father is a, my grandfather is a bank manager, that was a lie. OK, we're doing well. Now tell me what this means. My mother is home choir. And then this very interesting thing happened. I've often said, I think, that I believe that some of these scammers Use text-to-speech software. Well, I'll show you what this is in a minute. Essay typer connection, he said. My grandfather is a neurosurgeon doctor before die. What on earth is an essay typer connection? Asked Cassandra, and I'll show you what it is in a minute. Can you understand me now, he said. Is a wrong connection before? So we've agreed that your grandfather was definitely a neurosurgeon. And your father was definitely a bank manager. Awesome. Now tell me what this means. My mother is home choir. To which a man replied, yes. And before we go any further, I'll show you essay typer. Here it is. It's a kind of automatic type your own essay software. So you give it a subject. By default, it's come up with it's finals week and I have to finish my American Civil War essay. So let's delete American Civil War and, I don't know, let's type in neurosurgeon and see what it comes up with. I'm going to press enter on the keyboard because I'm using a laptop. And it's come up with the fluidity of neurosurgeon, gender norms and racial bias in the study of the modern neurosurgeon. And then you just keep pressing the enter key and it will randomly type you an essay. Look, I'm not joking. And so on. Back to our man. And our man has just replied, yes, when Cassandra asked him what my mother is home choir means. What on earth are you talking about? said Cassandra. Final time. What does this mean? My mother is home choir. Stop behaving like a 12-year-old idiot. Behave like a fully grown man and respected neurosurgeon with a brain. I think our man probably had amputated his own brain. I'm just a little boy before my father passed away, he said. I'm so sorry about that. So, can you tell me more about your family and yourself so we can know more each other? Final, final, final time, 
said Cassandra. I will not ask you again. What does this mean? My mother is home choir. Okay, he said. One fifty-eight. What's the time over there? Cassandra then got into a rut of repeating herself. My mother is home choir. What does that mean? I'm assuming you're an idiot who doesn't even know what a choir is. So goodbye. My mother, he replied, is a I'm a good Christian. Do you know what choir means? asked Cassandra. Yes, he said. So tell me what this means. My mother is home choir. If you can't or won't tell me, I will assume you're a childish, teenage, brain-dead idiot. Singing and talking, he replied, particularly when down loudly, are risky activities, as researchers learned from the Washington choir practice that became a COVID-19 super spreader event. What on earth are you talking about, said Cassandra. You really are an illiterate moron. So she asked him several more times what it meant. That is a one connection. I don't told you my mother is a choir, he said. I'm a little boy when my mother left me. I don't told you that my mother is a choir. You make me feel angry right now. My mother is not a choir. Please respect yourself. So can you please tell me more about your children? You typed that, replied Cassandra. My mother is home choir. You said it. You definitely did say my mother is home choir. Please tell me what you meant and stop pretending you didn't say it. Grow up and act like a man, a proper man, not a baby. OK, he said. Good, said Cassandra. So tell me what this means because you typed that. My mother was a Christian, he tried. Cassandra repeated herself a several dozen more times. My mother, he said, is a choir in the church before passed away. I am generally an optimistic person with a sense of humour, fairly easy going, and I don't think that I'm too critical about things in my life, but I also believe that it takes two people contributing to a relationship to make it work, since we all do believe in Almighty God. I do not want to meet someone who may think of taking advantage of me, or lie to me, and cheat on me under false pretenses. I do never lie, deceive, play games, or cheat in my life, and never wants to be cheated, deceive, lie, or been played games with in my life. Why you choose to remain single without a man? I also don't want to meet someone who will lie to me, said Cassandra. You have repeatedly lied to me, so telling me you'll never lie or deceive is clearly not true, and there's no way I would want a man like you. I'm not lying, he said. Oh, don't be ridiculous said Cassandra. You lied repeatedly about what your father did. Lie after lie after lie. And you lied about what your grandfather did. And she copied and pasted two different bits where he'd said, my grandfather is a bank manager, followed by, my grandfather is a neurosurgeon doctor. I actually think you're illiterate and can barely read, said Cassandra. So why don't you tell me who you really are? Because I've never encountered such a brain-dead, moronic, idiotic, stupid, sick person as you before. What are you talking about? You're just provoking me, he said. I don't tolerate it. Finish, OK? I'm not someone you can insult. I just want to know who you are, so please don't insult me. I don't like it. Then stop lying and tell the truth, said Cassandra. I hate, hate, hate liars. I can see you're just a heatless woman with so much pride, he said. I'm perfectly cool, thanks, said Cassandra. I'm not lying, so stop telling me that, OK? He said. You lie, 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 and I hate, hate, hate liars. Of course you're lying. Even a brain-dead moron like yourself can tell you're lying. My grandfather is a bank manager. My grandfather is a neurosurgeon doctor. Even a totally illiterate child can see that those are not the same. So one of them is a lie. OK, can we talk on video chat, he said. Yeah, I'll believe that when it happens, said Cassandra. Go on, I dare you. OK, he said. I'll bet you're too much of a coward to answer me, she said. And so she tried to call him. Unsurprisingly, he didn't answer. And your excuse is, camera isn't working, didn't brush my hair, not allowed to video call at work. I'm at work right now, he said. Liar, said Cassandra. I will call you when I get home. I know all the excuses you scammers use, said Cassandra. You're in your office using your phone now, so if you have time to type... You have time to answer. 
and she tried calling him again. And then she said to him, coward, liar, idiot. I don't understand you, he said. What, don't you understand? Coward or liar or idiot. I knew you wouldn't really video call because I know you're too much of a coward to answer. Goodbye, he said, and sent her lots of laughing faces. I don't like insults. Why are you coming, me scammer? You make me feel sad. I'm busy with work. You need to understand me. I'm so sorry to not answer your call. I have many people to attend with in my hospital right now. That's why I don't pick your call. Good morning, dear friend, he said that evening. I hope your day starts with a big bright smile. And he sent her a good evening gif. Followed by, it doesn't matter how hectic your day was. You can't help admiring the beauty of this evening. I hope you're having a good time right now. Good evening. Obviously one of those copy and paste little ditties that he'd got from Google. The following day, on Saturday the 21st of May, Good morning, sweetheart. Wishing you a wonderful day, filled with joy, fun and every ounce of happiness. I love you so much. Hi, my friend. How are you doing today? Hello, he said that evening when she'd ignored him for most of the day. You're going to video call me now, are you? said Cassandra, or are you going to come up with another excuse? OK, he said. How are you doing today? Call me, she said. Good, he said. And so she tried to call him again. Obviously, he didn't answer. Can't wait to hear your excuse for not answering, she said. Cue the excuse. I'm not at my desk. It's not allowed here. I'm too much of a coward to answer. Yes, I will call you, he said. I will call you right now. Please, can you pick your call? Go on then, said Cassandra. I'm so busy with work before. I want to call you right now, he said. I want to see you. I want you to say hello, Cassandra, and wave at me. And answer a question when I ask you. And so she tried to call him. Coward, liar, she said when he didn't answer her. And then, and now for even more pathetic excuses, I'm not allowed to answer calls here. My manager might be watching. There are security cameras everywhere. I might lose my job. You have a count of ten to call or go away. She got to seven and he said, OK. She got to four and he said, please wait. I will call you right now. Please, I want to call you. Can you understand me? She got to zero. Just wait. I want to call you. I don't, he said. One last chance. Said Cassandra, answer my call now or go away. She tried calling him again. And this is what happened. If you're watching the screen, watch closely at the end of the call, but I'll take a screenshot for you. Our man accidentally turned his camera on for a fraction of a second. Coward, she said goodbye. Please, he said. I love you. Don't talk ridiculous rubbish, said Cassandra. Try something at least passably believable. And so he tried calling her and she answered him. Hello. Hello, I can't see you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Listen, listen to me. I'm still at work. No, I'm not in you I'm not interested in your excuses. Listen to me. I'm gonna call you back later. I'll call you later. I'm at work now. I'm very busy. No, you're not. I said I'm busy. I mean it. I'm gonna call you, please. No, I'm not interested okay. in your stupid pathetic excuses. I know who you are. Baby, listen to me. I'm not like that. I'm not just about excuses, okay? I'm just telling you the truth about me. No, you're not. You, I'm you busy. haven't told me the truth at all. I did see you when you turned your camera on. Then I'll call you. No, you, no, you I'll, won't. I saw you when you turned your camera on. You have a nice voice, he tried when the call finished. I will call you on video chat later. Now stop lying to me, said Cassandra. I saw you when you turned your camera on. You're not busy with work. You know I can't hurt you, he said. You've spent the last ten minutes on here talking to me, so tell me something even half believable, or go away. Don't say that, he said. Try a thieving scammer, suggested Cassandra. I will get back to you later, he said. 
or I'm a lying scammer from Nigeria, or I've never set foot in Libya in my life, or even all three. And so he tried to call her again. Now what do you want? No, I can't, hardly. You are from Nigeria. I can't hear you. I can't see you. I can't, I can't, I really, really can't hear you. Can you go put your camera and see me? Let me show I really, really can't hear you. It was almost impossible to hear him. I can't hear you, said Cassandra. You are from Nigeria, he said. Why do you like to do? You will hear me later. I know you're from Nigeria, said Cassandra. You're a thieving scumbag. Cue the plan B sob story. I'm very sorry. Please forgive me. I really do love you. I have other things to do. Goodbye. Are you from Nigeria, he said. Please respond to me. I love you too. Let me call you later. OFGS, said Cassandra. Do I even sound Nigerian? You really are deaf as well as stupid. And don't bother with the plan B. I really do love you, sob story. I don't want to hear it. You told me that you're from Nigeria, he said. Why are you lying? No, I didn't, said Cassandra. Grow up. I said you were from Nigeria. You're not from Nigeria, he said. Why are you telling me that I'm from Nigeria? Because you are from Nigeria, said Cassandra. How stupid do you think I am? No, he said. I'm not from Nigeria. Where are you from then? asked Cassandra. Ghana? I'm from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Currency, working in Libya, he said. Then he tried calling her again. Go away, said Cassandra. Please pick up my call, he said. What is going on here? Are you busy? I don't understand you. And so he tried calling her again. Cassandra ignored him. Cassandra ignored him on Sunday and she ignored him on Monday. Why are you not responding to me, he said. Send me your email address. Hi, please call me. Hi, he said on Tuesday morning and then on Tuesday afternoon. I need to call you again because you know better. I will tell you everything about my life. Hello, he said. And then he tried calling her. Oh. Oh. What do you want? Oh. What do you want? Why are you not responding to me? What, am, what is going on? I can't hear you. Why are you not responding to me? What is going on? I can't hear you. I said, why are you not responding to me on anger at here? What, what is going on? Why do you think, why would I wish to, re to respond to a Nigerian scammer? I'm not a Nigerian scammer, you don't believe me. I... No, show your, fa show your face and prove it to me. Okay, I promise you, I will call your video call right now. Go on then, do it. And if you've been paying attention to previous videos, I think you know what's going to happen next. I presume you aren't going to video call me, said Cassandra. I will expect you to wave at me and say hello, Cassandra, when I ask you to. I know. Why don't I call you and I'll bet you're too cowardly to answer? And so she tried calling him and unsurprisingly, he didn't answer. I don't think they can play their stolen videos if you call them. As I thought, she said, too cowardly. And so, of course, he tried calling her and this is what happened. Okay, wave at me and say hello, Cassandra. I can't hear you. No, I can't. I can see a video. I wish to see you. Can you see me a video call? No, I can see a video. I cannot see you. Wave at me and say hello, Cassandra. No, I didn't think you could. Our man, of course, tried the usual scammer tactic, 
that they will always use after they've played you one of those stolen videos. I just called you on video call, he said. You just saw me on video call. I do not wish to view a stolen video, said Cassandra. I wish to see you. I asked you to wave at me and say hello, Cassandra. I know what you look like and I know who you are. You just saw me, a video call. Just, I just called you, he said. No, I did not, said Cassandra. I saw a video of someone else. I asked to see you. I asked you to wave at me and say hello, Cassandra. I presume you do know what you look like. Do you have a mirror in your house? Yes, said our unsuspecting scammer, about to shoot himself in the foot. Excellent, said Cassandra. Then you'll know who this is. And she sent him a screenshot of the bit where he'd accidentally turned on his camera earlier. Caught off guard. A man thought a confession might be in order. OK, I understand you. I will tell you everything about me. Please do not block me, he said. I will tell you everything about me. Everything you want to know about me. I promise you. I very much doubt it said Cassandra. You will now tell me the plan B sob story, let me guess. Your father's dead, your mother's sick and needs medicine, you have three younger sisters to take care of, and you've never scammed anyone before. OK, I will tell you about it. Let me call you on video call, so you can see me, he said. Oh, and, oh yes, you still love me, added Cassandra. Please, can I call you video call? I'm from Nigeria, he said. I know that, said Cassandra. It's you that seems to be in doubt. I understand you. I'm from Nigeria, he said. I will tell you everything about my family. I doubt it, said Cassandra. He wasn't going to let up. She stayed in Cassandra mode the whole way through. I'm afraid our man got no mercy from her. Please, let me call you on video call, he said. Oh, go on then, if you must, said Cassandra. And so he called her again. Hi there. I can, but I can't hear you very well. Oh, that's better. I can hear you when you're closer to the phone. Now, tell me why a nice, like, tell me why a nice, like, young man like you is stealing pe money from people. No, I'm not stealing. Of course, you are. No. I saw you in my profile on, on Nigeria on Nigeria Facebook. I said, let me test you. I just shared my phone. I still can't hear you properly. I lost my mother. I've already, I've already lost my mother. I have a father right now. I have a brother in Nigeria. Yeah. Just about, I mean, yes. Yes, I can. If you keep your mouth close to the phone, I can hear you. Okay. I have a mother here in Nigeria. I have a brother. But I lost my mom. Oh dear, that's terribly sad. I'm a little boy when I left my And that's a reason for trying to steal money from people, is it? No, I'm not stealing money from people. Can you understand me, please? Stop lying to me. Okay. You're a scammer. I know perfectly well that you're a scammer. I know. I'm a scammer. Exactly. And scammers steal money from people. Yes, I know. You can seek forgive me. I don't think it's up to me to forgive you. I think you should be discussing that with God, don't you? Please. I'm still begging you. Well, as I say, I lost my mother. I think you should be discussing that with. When I, I think you should be discussing your life choices with God, not with me. Please, I'm so sorry. I don't believe you. Please, I'm a scammer. I know that I'm a scammer. You can't see for me. Yeah, well, at least we agree you're a scammer. I see no reason why I should forgive you. Please, I'm a I'm a scammer. Why do you think I should forgive you? God forgive us. You can still forgive me. I know that I'm wrong. I can't hear you. You can still forgive me, okay? 
God, I, God forgive us. You can still forgive me. Yes, well, as I say, you need to discuss it with God, not with me. I won't play you any more because it was almost impossible to hear him. And as you can hear, he was playing the usual Plan B sob story of Please Forgive Me. He tried again when the call had ended. I will tell you everything about me and my family, he said. Can you respond to me? I very much doubt it, said Cassandra, and I do not wish to hear it. Goodbye. You are a young man with your whole life ahead of you. I suggest you go to church and pray about your life choices and pass in life. I also suggest that you talk to your pastor stroke vicar for advice on a more fulfilling way to lead your life and take care of your family. I have not married, he said. I'm in single and I will not try it again. I very much doubt that, mate. Please, can you forgive me? Here we go again. It's always, please forgive me. And then he sent her several photos that he claimed for family members. They might well have been. I couldn't find them anywhere else. And that included a photograph of a white woman and a black man, underneath which he'd written, My brother have a white woman here in Nigeria. I just sent a photo of it to you. I will tell you everything about my life. I promise you, please do not block me. That woman you saw is my father and my stepmother. My brother married a white woman in Nigeria here. And he sent a few more photos, finishing with another photo of the same couple and a little boy. This is my sister, he said. Please, can you respond to me? And he tried calling her again. But by then, Cassandra had decided to ghost him. And that was the end of our man. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Please like it. Please share it. Please comment down below. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again in another video.